Hey everybody, it's Brian. Thanks for joining me. We're back for our last lesson in the crypto series, and today we're going to be talking about the passive income opportunities that exist out there. So before we get started, I always have to remind you, let you know that I am not a licensed investment advisor, and I certainly don't pretend to be one here. I'm just showing you the information, the tools, the techniques, the methods, things I've learned through the years that have helped me with trading and, and help me navigate the space. Uh, there is no representation being made that any strategy or system or methodology is going to guarantee profits for you. That's, that's impossible. It's impossible to know the future. Uh, anything can happen. The big takeaway, I think, from the slide is simply don't trade with money you can't afford to lose. If, if uh, a loss of, of your trading capital is going to result in not being able to pay the rent or not putting food on your table or gas in your car to get to work, then don't trade with it. If it's going to be a huge negative impact to your life, then wait until you have actual disposable capital, and then at that point, come into the marketplace. All right. So with that said, let's move forward. What is passive income? Well, for me, the definition of passive income is income that results from cash flow that's received on a regular basis that doesn't require a lot of effort. Uh, it doesn't mean that there's no effort, but it means that it, it's not highly labor-intensive or time-intensive. Uh, passive income to me means you might have to check on something a couple of times per day to inspect what you expect, right? But it doesn't require huge amounts of time. It might mean a few minutes here, a few minutes there, uh, maybe daily or, or weekly, just to ensure that things are performing and, and doing what you expect it to be doing. Uh, the crypto space does offer a tremendous amount of potential opportunities for passive income. We've already talked about mining and staking, masternodes. Uh, those things have a, a little bit higher barrier of, barrier of entry, uh, but once they're set up and working, do produce an income or a passive, fairly passive income. Uh, some others that are pretty interesting are lending programs, security tokens, dividends that are paid out through, through certain tokens, and algorithmic trading. So let's talk about those passive income opportunities. First up would be the lending programs. Now, this isn't a lending program uh, like you would typically think of it. It's not like we're a bank and we're going to loan John $5,000 to uh, make a new vehicle purchase, or not, I guess not new, but to make a vehicle purchase, and that John would then pay back at a set interest over X number of months or years, right? Uh, those programs do exist, but the ones I'm more interested in talking about today are the ones that uh, occur and work within the crypto exchanges that are out there. Uh, so we've got some interesting programs where uh, we can do crypto asset lending on a short-term basis where a trader, margin trader, or a, a short seller needs to borrow funds in order to shore up that position that he or she is taking. And uh, they're going to be in that position for a, a relatively short period of time and pay us interest for doing that. Now, it's not a direct one-to-one -one exchange. What we do is we invest in a invest our funds with a company that's going to pool these funds together and then make these, these quote, loans, if you will, to uh, either their own exchange or other exchanges where those funds can be utilized. Uh, so remember, like in, in futures, your broker is going to give you a, a certain level of margin to use. In Forex, you get a certain level of margin that you can use when you're making a trade so that the funds that are deposited can be utilized at a higher level. So like Forex, for example, if I deposit $5,000, the broker might give me 50 to 1 on that money so I could trade larger lot sizes and potentially reap higher rewards than I would by just trading one-to-one -one on that specific asset. So there's a, a lending, lending groups that are out there that pull these funds together and then provide those out on, on a short-term basis. The yields in this market uh, do fluctuate pretty, pretty wildly. It depends on the asset that's being loaned. It also depends on, on um, the demand of those assets that are being provided out there. Uh, right now, you know, going to a few of the lending programs that are out there, uh, you can find rates that, that range between 6% and 14% uh, 
uh, on, a, on a yearly basis, which is a, a pretty nice return, uh, kind of like a fixed asset return if you were investing in a, another traditional program. Um, and a lot of these do give you a quote uh, guarantee on your deposit so that your deposited funds uh, won't go negative. Now, I don't know what that's actually backed by and and how legitimate that, that quote uh, insured, uh, in, in, in insured guarantee on the initial deposits actually is. I think there's always the opportunity because with many of these, you're purchasing their token and um, you know, that token could still you know, evaporate uh, over overnight or, you know, in the, to use a crypto uh, crypto term that you know the, the the owners of the company could quote exit scam uh, so keep that in mind i mean it, it's definitely tongue-in-cheek uh, but there is still a risk involved in these even though it looks like on paper uh, there's a, a, a pretty nice upside opportunity there uh, and and there really is you know if you look at nexo for example uh, uh there i believe they offer uh six to eight percent on deposited funds dharma offers a ten percent apr uh, DYDX is offering around the same. Uh, if you look at the compound, uh, they're offering on DAI 12% interest, and that, those vary depending on the asset that they're lending. But um, definitely some opportunities out there that offer you that, that longer-term look to be able to provide a service through that lending program and uh, provide those services into various exchanges and make money uh, while your, your your cryptocurrency is inactive, or, or I guess it's active, but you're not actively trading it by by doing your specific buys and sells. You're just parking it there and allowing those funds to to grow, just like you might in a savings account, right? Uh, next up are security tokens, and uh, security tokens are are really interesting. These are uh, kind of a newcomer. I mean, they're not brand new, but they've been uh, emerging over about the past year, uh, and they're the closest thing to an off-blockchain traditional investment world. Uh, what the security tokens do is they represent a specific asset or a profit-sharing claim that pays out returns on an asset or profits generated by this group uh, that are according to a certain time schedule. Uh, many of these are actually regulated instruments. They're classified as securities and are regulated. Uh, depending on what that underlying asset is and its performance is, that passive income would vary pretty greatly. I mean, there's no way to, to know or project uh, you know, what, that, what that income would be. It's going to vary from asset to asset. But uh, just about anything can be tokenized when you, when you look at what a security token is. I mean, you could, you could tokenize a, a group of stocks and say, okay, this security token is going to invest in this basket of stocks, and, and then based on the performance of that basket of stocks, we're either going to make money or we're going to lose money. If we're making money, we're going to uh, distribute that profit on whatever schedule this might be. Uh, same, you know, it could be a security, it could be token tokenizing gold, it could be tokenizing a real estate uh, investment, so on and so forth. So um, that's that's an interesting kind of emerging market. Uh, it, I, I say emerging, it's it's in existence, but something that I think will keep growing over time that's really interesting, and especially for those that are interested in uh, getting involved in crypto, getting involved in this world, but having uh, an asset or a token that is uh, that has some level of regulation behind it. So that, that's pretty darn interesting. Uh, next up would be dividends. There are a lot of tokens and uh, companies out there that pay Dividends. I've got three on the board here. Uh, two I'm actually invested in. One uh, I'm not. But I'll, I'll talk about all three of them. And these are just examples. There's hundreds of others out there. But what a dividend is is the distribution of a reward from a company's earnings, and it's it's paid out to its shareholders. Uh, it's paid out either um, in a cash payment or in shares of stock, or it could be some other asset that they're providing out based on whatever returns that they're getting. Uh, CryptoBet, for example, that's one that I, I have uh, tokens in. I have CryptoBet tokens. Uh, they just, it's brand new, but they just announced their earnings and they're paying out cash to the shareholders uh, or token holders, I guess I should say to be more accurate, in Bitcoin. They'll deposit Bitcoin directly into the token holders based on the profit 
for that previous month and the number of tokens of, of that asset that you actually hold, and they'll provide that out there. And there's other bonuses as well that they distribute based on uh, partnerships and other tokens that you hold as well. Uh, Coin Lotto is another one. It's a, it's a betting site, it's a, a lottery online lottery site, uh, and they will, as they get up and running, will be paying out dividends to the holders of their tokens. Uh, bankroll credits, same thing. You're, you're purchasing credits through the Tron blockchain, and you're holding those, and they're paying you a, 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 a portion of their funds uh, by holding onto those credits back into your account. So, And there's a lot of others that are out there. Uh, bankroll, I'm not currently involved in. I, I, I was involved in Bankroll uh, last year for a bit on another plan that they had that actually paid out very well. I, I think the backers, uh, the owners of this platform, seem to be on the surface uh, pretty trustworthy and uh, we're certainly paying out but who knows i mean again it's crypto so with any of these anything can happen at any moment but these are a few that um, i've had interest in or i'm currently invested in that i like and they and i like them because i i got involved with them because of the opportunity to earn dividends based on their earnings now again not telling you to go out and buy these assets or buy these tokens. I'm just simply saying that this is an example of things that offer you the opportunities to do that. There's a number of others out there. If you do a search, you'll be able to find them. Uh, just just you know, do your research and, and make sure that you're comfortable with the folks that are running the platforms, and then based on that, you can get involved or walk away and not get involved. I'm not here to debate uh, the validity of any specific cryptocurrency or crypto opportunity, just giving you some ideas of what are out there to earn dividends based on the performance of a company, just like you would in the stock market. Uh, and then finally, there's algorithmic trading. And what algorithmic trading is, is using a computer to follow a predetermined or predefined set of instructions, which is called an algorithm. And if the computer follows those set of instructions, and it places a trade. The, the, the instructions could be based on any number of things. It could be based, based on uh, market timing, on price, on quantity of, of trades that are occurring. Uh, any mathematical model that we could think up to trade manually, we could plug in those parameters and have it trade automatically for us. Uh, the theory behind algorithmic trading is that a computer algorithm can generate profits at a speed and a frequency that's impossible for a human trader to do. Uh, a lot of algorithmic trading is actually based on high-frequency trading. Uh, not all of it, though. I mean, there's, there's algorithms that are based on daily models. There's algorithms that are based on four-hour and one-hour models. Uh, many, though, uh, are based on those really fast scalp-style trades where you're in and out of the market, looking at very specific, specific parameters and taking an action um, that a human just simply wouldn't be able to keep up with. Uh, very, very small, quick uh, gains. Uh, but there, it's really interesting because the benefits of algorithmic trading is that uh, the, probably the, the key is it removes human emotion. There is no person waiting for uh, certain key points to align and then sitting there hesitating because uh, they're second-guessing that trade now. Uh, the computer's going to take it. These things aligned, I'm going to take the trade. So it removes that emotion, which is pretty darn awesome. Uh, it, it, the, the, the order placement is going to be instant, and it's going to be accurate because it's going to be doing placing that order exactly to – the T of those predetermined conditions and those predetermined uh, inputs that are there. Uh, the trades are going to be timed correctly, and they're going to avoid those significant price changes that could occur from that human hesitating and not pushing the button to take the trade. Uh, it reduces that risk of manual errors. And the, another really cool part of algorithmic trading is it can be back tested accurately. Um, and I, you know, you can say, well, my manual trading can be back tested as well. It can be, but again, you've got that human component. Uh, when you're using an algorithm and plugging that, that, those, those parameters into the system and then saying, okay, replay the market over the past year, 
and show me what the outcomes would be. It's going to be looking at that accurately. As a, as a human, we get sometimes caught up in that method of wanting something to fit what our predetermined idea uh, might show, the predetermined outcome might be. We want it to fit into that that schedule. So we sometimes have a tendency when we're looking back historically to look back too favorably. We, we look at it to favor what our, our belief might be. Uh, so we look at it to, to fit what our hypothesis um, is. So computers don't do that. They're going to say, hey, this is a good trading method or this is not a good trading method because I've historically back tested this to the T of what you've put in there. Uh, so there's, there's a couple of, of groups that are out there that offer that algorithmic trading. Uh, Zignally is one that uh, will, will uh, go in and uh, through an API will connect with your broker and send trade signals right over to your brokerage. Um, and you can see history on there, who's trading, what they've been trading. I say who's trading, what group or, or, or screen name, I guess, is trading, what their history has been, how many trades they've taken, you can understand, look up a little bit about drawdown, what the expectations might be for um, A, trading frequency and potential outcomes. Of course, as with anything, historical performance does not guarantee future results. There's no way to know what the future is going to bring. And historically, a lot of times, algorithmic uh, trades have uh, over time crashed and burned. Not all of them, but many do. Uh, Market conditions change. Algorithms may not be uh, set up to, to take the, the proper actions as market conditions change, and they'll go through prolonged periods of drawdown or will just crater right out. So do be aware. You know, diversify. Uh, three commas is another one. It offers the same thing. It connects through an API with your uh, brokerage system and trades for you. Uh, one that I'm actually invested in is uh, Megalodon Trading. I've actually spoken to the person that owns it and um, had conversations around his trading methodology. Uh, he's very focused on uh, managing risk. Risk is, is, is the first thing in his book to manage, and uh, I support that wholly. It really fits in with my belief around trading. Um, over the past three months, he's generated 13.6% uh, on uh, the money that I've got invested. So that's been uh, a very nice program to be involved in, and I think he's constantly watching and creating new algorithms and creating updates that um, you know can potentially – uh, keep growing those accounts. Um, I'll put a link for Megalodon in at the bottom of this video if you guys have got like to get involved there. Uh, Megalodon is a little different. These these first two three commas and Zignally, uh, you actually just connect them to your platform through an API. With Megalodon, you deposit funds and then and then he trades um, that pool of funds and uh, distributes profits out. Uh, according to to your percent owned of, of percent of initial deposits. So, anyway, opportunities there through algorithmic trading, and and you could actually even even write your own. You know, using three commas, you could actually go in and write your own trading method. You could, if you've got a trading method that you follow and you enjoy doing, you could write it and then program it in and let it go and and have that that expert that artificial intelligence actually managing your trades for you based on whatever criteria that you've given to it. So really interesting stuff. It's amazing what, out, what is out there. Um, algorithmic trading has come a long, long way since I first got involved in these markets. Um, you know, there, we just could not do what you can do today uh, looking back you know, five, ten years ago. Uh, algorithmic trading has certainly come a long way, and I have a lot more confidence in it today uh, than I did a few years ago. So it's another one that I'm, I'm really interested in, and I'm allocating funds into. So to summarize all of this, there are some amazing opportunities out there. I do, you want, do want you to be wary of the downside of each of these. There is no perfect investment opportunity. There is nothing that's going to guarantee you returns. Uh, anything that you're doing uh, can stop tomorrow. Uh, it can stop at any point. Uh, so make sure that you diversify when you're looking at these.
All right, so that's it for right now. Uh, head over to the Facebook page. I'm always posting things in there uh, that I'm doing, and I, I post it in real time. I, I post a lot of the futures trades uh, that I, I take in there. I'll be posting the crypto trades that I take now that we've got uh, this crypto exercise, the, the, the block of lessons out of the way. I'll be talking more about crypto opportunities in, on that page as well. So definitely head over there. Um, it's not a group. It's a, it's a page. So it's facebook.com forward slash M-M-F-Y-L, uh, Make Money From Your Laptop, uh, the abbreviation for Make Money From Your Laptop. So you can check that out and become part of it and uh, see what's going on in real time as I post updates over there. And, of course, um, as always, if you like what I've been talking about, be sure to share it with your friends. It's all free. I'm never going to ask you directly for a dime. Uh, so share it. You've got nothing to lose. It's great information that I provide, things that are being utilized and actually implemented uh, in real time, things that I, I, I talk about are things that I do. And if I don't do it and talk about it, I'd tell you that it's something that I'm not invested in. Uh, but just so that you know, this is real stuff that real people do, and it's not just hypothetical. So you can share that with confidence with your friends and family if they'd like to learn this stuff as well. All right, so that's it for now. Have a great day, and thanks for listening. Bye.